Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and I'm here to talk today about one of my favorite models of typewriters. If you've been here before, you've probably heard me talk a lot about the Smith Corona 5 series, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about the models in this series and why I think they're the best. So I've had a myriad of these machines in my collection. I have a 1949 Sterling, which I named Knightley. I had a 1955 Clipper named Copeland. I had a 1956 Silent Super in the green body. I've had the 1958 Clipper, and then I also had a 1962 Sterling. I've had a lot of these machines. They've all had very minimal repairs on them. They've all been really easy to work on, very easy to clean. And that's one of the reasons why I like these models so much. I just find they're so intuitive to work on and really easy to just take apart, put back together, and understand how they operate. Unlike some of the other later Smith Coronas or unlike some of the other Royal models I've had in my collection from the same time period. So let's talk a little bit about the machines actually in the 5 Series. So the 5 Series started in about 1950, although I have a 1949, 1950 to 1962. It was a series of typewriters all in a very similar body design. You had the Clipper, you had the Oh no, I've already forgotten all of them. <laughs> we also had the Sterling, we had the Silent, and then we had the Silent Super. Now all of these names came from machines previously in the line. They all had different body designs leading up to the 5 Series, and they all kind of had similar body designs to each other, but were designated by having different features by model. So before we got into the Clipper Series, we actually had the Smith Corona Standard, which are those flat top machines. You've probably seen some of those. In fact, I have one of those. We had the flat top and then after the flat top we actually had a rounded black crinkle paint finish version of the standard that had an arrow across the front in racing stripes. Now when you're looking at some of the models from the 1940s that are all in this series, you can really tell the difference by the striping across the front. So after you had the standard model, we actually got into the Clipper, which again started out as a flat top machine, but in the 1940s it changed to that rounded body design in that matte black finish, and it had no design stripes across the front, but it had a little Clipper logo with a little plane on it. Now when you get into the 1950s, this body design then changed from that black rounded top into what we think of as the 5 Series, which started again about the 1950s, and those are designated by having a 5C in front of their serial number. After the Clipper, you have the Silent Model, and in the 40s and the earlier versions of the Silent Model also came in that flat top design, but then you get into the 1940s design of them and they looked very similar to the Clipper, and you could tell the difference between the Clipper and the Silent model by the number of stripes again on the machine, and those would have three racing stripes across the front of the machine. Now when we get into the 1950s and the 5 series of the Silent models, the racing stripes actually transferred to the top of the machine, so they had racing stripes down the top of the machine, and that's another way you can kind of tell the difference between the models there the number of stripes across the front of them. One step up from the Silent is the Sterling. Now I have a couple Sterlings and they are also kind of in that same body shape design of starting out as flat tops and then slowly moved into that black body design. And then in the 1950s, we got the Silent version in the 5 Series, again designated by the 5 in front of their serial number. That's how you can tell the difference between the different body shapes and designs of the machines. Now they had the 5 Series and then as we get into the 60s, they actually have the 5A or or the 5AX series, which is a little bit of a different body design, kind of a take on what we think of as the 50s Smith Corona Sterlings, but a little bit different. One step up from the Sterling then is the Silent Super, which is like the beefed up premium version. I've had a couple people from other countries tell me in their countries it's just labeled as the Super, but mine is the Silent Super. Now these started in about 1953 as the premium model, and those are labeled as the 5T series. What I really like about this line is they are all designated as being the similar body type, but as you go up with each model, you get different features on each machine, which means that you could invest a little and get something like a clipper, or if you wanted some of those additional functions, you could invest more and get something like the Silent Super, which has additional keys and additional functions. So starting with the clippers, which again are the lower end models of this line, I've noticed they have no rabbit ears on the back to hold up your paper, and they also don't have a tab key. This kind of threw me off. I didn't even realize the machine did didn't have a tab on it, but that's another way for them to reduce costs as they're making this model, so you could still invest in having a good solid Smith Corona with just fewer functions. 
the Sterling model actually has the paper bail across the top, and it also has a paper guide, which I find very helpful. A little metal piece that you can set your paper in against, and it keeps your paper in line on the side, which I really like having on a typewriter, so that would be a step up and an additional charge in that model. The Silent, which is described as the next kind of step up, has the addition of paper bailers across the front instead of just the top paper bail. They've got these little things on the front that hold the paper in place. It also has a line retainer and an easy removable platen, which is one of my favorite things to have in a typewriter. And then the top of the line version, again, is that Silent Super. What I think is really interesting about this is the addition of a different tab mechanism on the right side of the keyboard. So you'll notice on the Silent Super's keyboard, it has a tab button in addition to a set and clear button right on the right side of the keyboard. Super easy then to change your tabs and your margins there using that side portion of the keyboard. It looks a little bit different. You also have some additional keys on the Silent Super, or at least I have them on my Silent Super. So I have an additional one, an exclamation key, on the number row of the keyboard. And I also have a plus and equal sign key on that top row, which I don't have on any of the other Smith Corona 5 Series machines in my collection. Now, since these machines are also from the 1950s, they started getting into some really cool colors during this series from 1950 to about 1960. You had desert sand, sapphire gray, alpine blue, seafoam green, and coral pink. These were all the designer colors that kind of went into these machines, and I think they all look really fun. You also will find some older machines from this line before they got into the colors that are in that brown color. And I found an advertisement that actually described this color as rust brown. Now my one sterling actually is this brown color with the green keys, and I think rust brown sounds like an accurate description of that shade. Someone's hammering something. Oh, this is going to be annoying. Other advertisements also describe machines pre the brown color as being a gray crinkle paint finish, and they designate it as being non-glare. Now, I think this is fascinating, and something I've learned about typewriters along the way is the finish of the machine is actually super important to its usefulness. If you think about it, secretaries who are typing on those black, shiny, glossy machines would be staring into a typewriter that actually is reflecting light, so they would have a glare across the machine. And so when they were making crinkle paint or matte finish typewriters, they were actually advertising them as non-glare to help reduce headaches in the workplace. So you didn't have light reflecting off of your shiny, glossy black typewriter into your eyes and giving you a headache at work. Now you had this crinkle paint matte finish typewriter that is no longer reflecting light. So supposedly it's being a headache saver in the workplace. Now some of the later models in this five series or later machines made later in the decade are described as having some different colors. I've had a gray finished clipper that I got when I was in Harrisburg, and that actually has a kind of different feel to it, and I did find an advertisement that described that as Dove Gray, which I think is the right name for that shade. It's a little bit different than that sapphire gray finish that you had on the Core Series machines. And then I also had this 1962 Sterling in this greenish finish, and as I was looking through advertisements of machines of this time, I found out that that was actually called Sage Gray even though I thought it looked green, but I do think it's interesting to look at the shade names for typewriters. That's just something I find fascinating. Shh, stop it. Now, as always, you can get models that are above this line and below this line. If you think about how Smith Corona set up their line, they wanted to make sure that you had functions on machines that made you want to buy the next model up. So below the 5 Series would have been the Skyrider, which again is a lightweight portable, something that travels a lot easier, a lot smaller. You can also charge a lot less for it because it has less materials in it, less functionality. Then you have the 5 Series. After the 5 Series, you're getting into more office standard models, something like the Pacemaker, for example, which I also have in my collection. I really like the way this is set up and designed, and I know other typewriter companies did similar things where they'd have one model and add additional functions each time you went up the line. I'm thinking specifically of the Royal Futura line. You had the 400, the 600, and the 800. The 800 Futura was kind of like the souped up version, and you just remove functions as you go further down the line to make them more affordable for the consumer. I like how many options there are in the 5 Series. I like that you've got tons of color options, but also functionality options. Things like
like different keys on the keyboard, different paper balers, little things that kind of add to the value of the machine depending on how you like to use it and how often you're using it. Again, I also think these machines are super fun to type on and work on. I've taken apart a lot of these guys and the paneling on the outside I find is really intuitive. It's held in with some screws on the bottom and on the back plate. I also discovered that these guys often had re easy removable platens, which I so much prefer to the Royal Platens of the 1950s, which had like four screws in them. I really like that functionality on them. I think it makes them fun to take apart and I just really enjoy that about them. I've also found at least in my local area here in the United States in Pennsylvania, there's just so many available. They made lots and lots and lots of these, especially in the United States. So when you see one of them, you kind of know in your mind that there's a lot of options out there and it makes you feel like you don't have to spend as much money on them, or at least I don't have to spend as much money on them because if I pass on this one, I know I'll at least see another model of that later down the road. I often find them at estate sales, yard sales, antique shops. They're just everywhere where I am. Now I know that's not the same for people in other countries. I know in Europe, they're always looking for a Smith Corona that's kind of the American brand machine in the way that Olympia and Optima and all of those other brands are very much more European and I never see them here. But here where I am, there's tons of options for these guys. So I can kind of negotiate the prices a little bit on these models because they're a little bit more standardized in my area. Again, I just think that looking at the history of these machines. I love Smith Corona typewriters. I have a lot of them. I've been slowly kind of piecing out my Royals and replacing them with Smith Coronas. I just like the design of them. I find they're easy to work on. I find them much less intimidating than taking apart some of the other machines. But I also haven't had to do as many repairs to my Smith Coronas as I have had to do on other machines. Don't get me wrong, the Corsair Deluxe is a nightmare, but some of the other machines in their line I just find to be intuitive to work on and repair and very, very hardy, which I like in a typewriter. Again, some of the other things that have changed across the line in Smith Corona is the cases as well. So along with the 5 Series, they also introduced what they called the Holiday Case, and I love the Holiday Case. It is kind of this like leather outside with an aluminum body case, super lightweight, great handle, and on the inside they actually have a bracket that feeds into the bottom of the typewriter to hold it in place and you can remove this bracket with this really easy tab on the side and now you've got an open case for you to actually take on your holiday. So you could take out that bracket and the typewriter and use the case as your own personal suitcase, which I think adds to the multifunction of this machine and design. I love the holiday case. This is why I suggest the Smith Coronas as kind of your entry level machine from the 5 Series. Again, hardy, easy to work on, lots of variety, and super easy to get, at least here in the United States. And that's why I think they're a great entry-level machine. I have three of them currently in my collection and I have sold two others. I just like them so much and I'm trying to collect them all, so I'm looking for a silent to add to the collection. I currently have, at least behind me, a 1949 Sterling in the Brust Brown color with the green keys. Love this machine, love the action of this machine. I also have the 1956 Silent Super in the green color, the seafoam green color. I really like this machine. It also has a gothic typeface, which I really appreciate and I really like how souped up it is. It's still the same kind of action I would get on the 1949 Sterling, but it's got these additional features which I think make it really interesting. And then I also have a 1958 Clipper in this dove gray color. This was one of those machines I thought about selling because it's later, it's gray colored, but I just love typing on it so much that I decided to keep it. It's the smoothest typewriter I have in my collection. I really like typing on this machine. I just enjoy the process of it, which is why I decided to keep this one as well. So I have three, I've owned five at some point, and I really like these models. If they're cheap enough, I'm always going to pick them up because I like cleaning them. They're easy to work on, and I find that they're just really hardy machines. So those are the five Corona series in my collection. Again, one of my favorite lines of typewriters. If you have a favorite line of typewriters or a favorite model or even brand, let me know in the comments down below. Tell me what your suggestion is for entry-level collectors. If you're interested in more typewriter content, I do have some more videos on this YouTube channel. I also have an Instagram at just.my.typewriter. I wanna thank you all so much for watching and remind you, you're just my type, writer. Now they're done hammering.